and welcome to My Own Worst Enemy. I am going to do another unboxing today. We are looking at Close Action, uh, Age of Fighting Cell Volume 1, Clash of Arms Games. I don't know anything about this game as I <laughs> typically with these unboxings. It makes sense, right? I got a brand new game. I don't know much about it. Maybe a little about it. I do know this is a... Um, this is a, it's not a manage a bunch of ships type game. I think you're limited to smaller number, single ships, couple of ships, much more detailed, which is kind of right up my alley because, you know, having a Starfleet Battles background, I want to control not a whole fleet, just, just a handful of ships at most. Um, so, yep, I've, I've got close action here. Don't know anything about it. I'm looking forward to trying it. I do know, I shouldn't say I don't know anything about it. I do know, I've, I've read a little bit about it and... Of course, you get the standard, you can't solo play this game because there's hidden information. Well, we don't buy that here at My Own Worst Enemy. There's there's ways around hidden information. And we're going to, you know, if I do a playthrough of this, which I probably will, um, I'll definitely show you how to get around the so-called hidden information. Um, and so we're not going to worry about that. Uh, so here you go, close action. Uh, designer is Mark Campbell. Uh, graphics, uh, I'm not going to say Steve's last name. <laughs> um, and it's it's copyright 1997. So this game, I can't remember where I bought this game, but I do believe I did buy it new. I don't think it's, I don't think this is one of the ones I bought used. We're going to find out together. <laughs> so, let's take a look inside. Um, so here we see, let me flip the box around again. And the first thing we notice is we get some dice, and that, you know, it's 2d6, 2d10. That's interesting. And it always seems to be that you get a blue and a gray on, on the, I don't know if that's, maybe that's a popular, maybe it's a popular color for uh, board war games because, you know, I don't know, you have the Confederate gray and the, <laughs> the Union blue. I always seem to get blue and gray. Somebody let me know why that is. So more dice. We will always take those. And the rule book. Again, by Mark Campbell. Let's take a let's move this box up a little bit, and let's take a look at the rule book here. Uh, this is not a one of those fancy color rule books like I, we've been looking at lately. It's black and white, um, and again, 1997. So maybe that's why it doesn't look as nice as some of the rule books. And there's the uh, basic information: ships, counters. Looks like the layout is. Almost reminds me of a Starfleet Battles layout because it's it's kind of got that legalese layout, as I like to say, where you have 1.G and then 1.G12 and it breaks down into A, B, C, D. So um, if it's it, that can actually be useful if it doesn't get too degenerate into too much detail, which looking at this, see 1G starts here and goes all the way to pay uh, two pages, three page, two and a half pages. So it, it, there could be a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> it could get difficult fast. I don't know what the difficulty level of this game is. I don't think it's I don't think it's too difficult really. Um, so we got weather, uh, plotting, and I think this is where you know they were talking about what I read about your plotting is see all ships must secretly and simultaneously plot their movement actions. Well, there's two ways you can do that, and I don't want to get into a discussion about how to solo play. But right off the top of my head, you know you can have no secret actions and just everything's out in the open if you're doing this solo i don't know why you couldn't it's you know you're, you've got let's say you've got two ships fighting each other you can you can kind of role play what they're gonna do if you want to do secret actions there's there's um there's some stuff you can do there to make it a little more uncertain as to what's going to happen and we'll cover that at the appropriate time uh movement concepts wind turning, facing, acceleration. I got to tell you, I'm going to like this game because, it, like I said, it, it sounds to me like an Age of Cell version of Starfleet Battles. And that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. And I don't know, um, what, poor maneuvering, collisions, illegal moves. So let's see, firing arcs. See, again, you, here, here we go. I would play a Constitution class starship there and it's, <laughs> it's the same thing. So you have firing arcs ranges uh what i was looking for there really is the damage because i like here we go damage i'm hoping this has like starfleet battles a kind of an ssd form of battle damage where you have these ships and you're marking off you know your cell damage and your hull is damaged your weapons that are damaged 
crews, repairs. Yeah, that's crew assignments. See, now we're talking. So you, you want to be able to assign crew to repair things. And that level of detail in this type of game is exactly what I would like to see. Boarding, I like the borders. Uh, Multi-ship boarding, capturing ships. Yeah, this just sounds freaking awesome. <laughs> I, I've, I've never played one of these um, HSL games, so I'm looking forward to this. Um, anchoring. Cutting the anchor. Oh, my goodness. Fatigue. Yeah, this this is going to be interesting. Shallow water and land. Um, and designer's notes. We always like to see designer's notes. So that's the rule book. It's, as far as the quality goes, it's just a basic paper. It's not the really thick paper, the glossy color paper which would have been nice. Didn't see an example playthrough either. So um, let me go back to the beginning real quick. Uh, I, you know, I don't have, you know, it's, it's just, it's a nice thing to have a good example playthrough. Um, and back in 97, that probably wasn't quite so popular. I don't know. And nowadays, you know, I'm, I'm spoiled with um, GMT's playthroughs. They always provide a good playthrough when they, when you get a game from GMT. Uh, but I uh, don't see one here, so... Uh, we'll work around that, too. Uh, what do we got next? We've got maps. Looks like we have... Let's set this one aside. Rather large maps. And I'll never get this on the entire board, my entire gaming table here. But let's see if we can look at... We'll look at half a section at a time. So here's the lower half of this. And basically, it's ocean. And I'm assuming you can see that there's darker... Where'd my pointer go? There's darker hexes, and then they get lighter as you go this way. And I'm assuming that's, you know, you're getting deep water to shallower water, and that's probably going to have an effect on certain sized ships. And the other side of that map is just more the same. That's probably really shallow water, So and over here too, so that's probably going to be something you'd want to avoid. So that's cool. I don't see anything other though than water on this map. The next map... Looks like more of the same. No land, just water, open seas. A little bit different. You know, you've got this shallower water here. Yeah, just a little different version of the first map. So that's good. We like maps like that. And this looks like a counter sheet. And I don't know, let me look in here real quick because that looks like just one counter sheet. Okay, well, looks like we only get one counter sheet. And like I said, I don't know, I can't remember if I bought this game used or not. I don't think I did. I think there's actually two, and these are the half counter sheets. Um, so there are two of those here. And let's see if I can get these on camera here for you. So um, this is uh, two sheets, fronts, the front sides of these sheets. This sheet looks like there's just, these are the, uh, looks like some informa information type things, you know, color struck, um, men and rigging, anchored, status markers, I guess is what this is. And there's a backside to this counter sheet, furled cells, fouled, um, grappled. So this looks more like the informational stuff. This looks like the actual ship counters. And I'm going to assume that red is one side and yellow is the other. Uh, wind direction on the other side. I, there's some numbers on the other side. And I don't know if that's maybe some kind of a damage flip thing going on there, but probably, probably so. So not a lot of counters. It's probably one counter sheet if you add those two half sheets together. They are nice looking counters, though. This would probably be a good game to play with uh, miniatures, but that's going down a rabbit hole. I don't really want to go down. <laughs> that's just something more, more than I want to get into. Uh, and here we have the scenario book. And let's take a quick look at this. Uh, looks like there are 25 scenarios. That's nice. We won't flip through all these. We'll just open to one. Looks like some good descriptive stuff for the scenarios. Descriptive stuff. That's a good way to put it. And then, uh, yeah, historical background. I love that. And then the setup and everything. So, again, the scenario book is, you know, not the nice fancy color things that we see sometimes. Just black and white, but it gets the job done. Um, and there's that map, you know, it tells you 
Oh, it's looking like, I wonder if you fit those two maps together. Wow, that would, that's going to be huge. We're going to have to have a big play surface for this. <laughs> or maybe put it into Tabletop Simulator and get it running there. Uh, what is this? I want to say, is this something that I ordered that came with this? That I ordered extra with this? I can't remember. British Navy at Bay. I can't remember what this is. Um... I think this might be something, because I'm a big fan of the Revolutionary War in that time period, and th this is probably something... I don't know that this comes with close action. I think I ordered this in addition. I think I ordered this with. I um, can't remember, but yeah, this this appealed to me because it was uh, Revolutionary War and naval combat there, so just more scenarios. Oh, look at that. Uh, that's a lot of ships, though. Um, Clash of Arms games, yeah. Forgot that was even in here. But like I said, I think this is something I ordered in addition to. I have to check on that and probably leave a note in the uh, video that that's what I did or didn't do. And let's get to the bottom of the box here. Um, these are just, it looks like, charts. Player's aid cards, those kinds of things. An errata sheet, um, that's good. Uh, like I said, this is 1997, so the errata sheet, I'm probably hopefully that's updated from uh, more recently than the time of print. Clash of Arms, uh, order stuff card, or what'd you find wrong? Yeah, this is just the data charts for the ships, the double-sided, um, some information, gunfire, uh, now here, this is what I was talking about. This this looks like I was talking about the SSDs from Starfleet Battles. This looks kind of like that. Uh, you've got rigging your whole your crew. It looks like you'll 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 be marking those sorts of things off here. You know, you'll have your. Um, and this almost looks like a sample of play here that are a maybe there is a playthrough example because it looks like someone's gone through and you know put uh, the turn as it happened here all the way to the end of the game. You know, you plot your movements and what's going on and mark off your damage, those kinds of things. Um, yeah, so this this may be the playthrough that I was mentioning earlier. It looks like a narrative of Majestic. Yeah, that's good. That is really good. Um, and then here's the blank, the blank um, SSD sheet, let's call it. That's what I've been calling it, so let's keep calling it. Gonna have to make some more copies of this, it looks like. I only give you two, but that's okay. I can make copies of that. A um, critical hits table. A rigging, critical hits table. Boarding. Lots and lots of player's aid cards. Um, more of those SSD sheets. Single-sided. And just more charts and player's aid cards. So... That's it. That is a quick look at what's inside of Close Action Fighting Cell Volume 1. Really looking forward to getting this one to the table. Um, it looks like something that I'm going to enjoy quite a bit. Uh, and I do plan on getting this to uh, my own worst enemy. And we'll have those discussions about how to play solo. So there you go. Uh, thank you for watching this unboxing, and I hope you come back and look for a playthrough of this at some point.